Jeremy Culey, and welcome to Home Movie Maker 2. As you've just seen, we've got a home movie maker who's pretty competent with a camera, but could use a few tips on how to improve on the end result. Most of you have probably seen Home Movie Maker 1, I hope, which you bought or received as a bonus at Maya when you purchased your camcorder. Well, Home Movie Maker 1 covered many of the basics in camcorder use. We looked at focusing, keeping the camera steady, lighting, composition, and in-camera editing. In the program you're watching now, we're going to look at techniques that will help you, the home movie maker, add sophistication to your work. Improving the look of the material you're shooting. Improving the way you use your camcorder to capture the scene. And showing how to edit the material into a story. Along the way, we'll be showing you lots of simple tips, as well as looking at some more advanced accessories that will really help you produce results that anyone will be proud to show. Camcorders get more sophisticated every year. They have in-camera titling, electronic image stabilisation, even digital effects. But camcorders still have some limitations. They don't always work well in low light, and they can't handle the same amount of contrast, the amount of difference between light and dark areas, as the human eye can. They're also more sensitive to the differences in the colour of light. You've probably returned from at least one day's filming to find that your shots have an unexpected blue or orange cast. But don't be discouraged. These are the same problems professional cameramen have to contend with as well. To help overcome some of these problems, camcorders come equipped with a host of features to help make the use of the camcorder as simple and reliable as possible. I mean, you've got autofocus to keep the image sharp, white balance to adjust the colour of the image, and auto iris to control the brightness. Now these auto features work by taking an average of the scene. The average brightness, the average whiteness, and the average focus. But average settings sometimes give, well, average results. To improve the quality of your material, you need to take responsibility for these settings. So, if you can, turn off the automatic function and learn how to white balance, focus, and expose manually. I mean, you may make some mistakes at first, but this is the only way that you'll start to get the results you want, instead of the results the camcorder wants to give you. Once you've learned how to manually control the functions of the camcorder, you can choose to use the automatic functions when the situation calls for it. That way you get the best of both worlds. Let's look at our ballet scene again. Now the teacher wants to make it special if it's going to be a gift to the pupil's parents. It's okay, but there's a lot that could be done to improve the quality of this material. The main problem with this scene is contrast. There's too much difference between the bright and the dark areas. As the camera, or the subject, moves through these bright and dark areas, the automatic iris adjusts the lens. And this can look annoying. As you saw in Home Movie Maker 1, you can use artificial lights to balance out the contrast. In this situation, the small battery-powered camera lights may not be bright enough to make much difference. This scene probably requires larger, mains-powered video lights. This has reduced the contrast, but now we have a problem with the colour balance in the scene. As the camcorder has been balanced for daylight, the artificial lights appear orange. Well, this is a common problem. You should be aware by now that there's no such thing as white light. Our eyes and our brains compensate for changes in light, so we always see the right colours. In fact, sunlight is very blue, compared with normal interior light bulbs. Now, most camera lights have been designed for use inside houses. Therefore, they give out the same colour of light as domestic light bulbs. Now, when you white balance a camcorder, the camcorder adjusts the way it responds to light so that white looks white. But in a situation where there's a combination of daylight and artificial light, Camcorders can't correct for both. So, when shooting interiors, it's better to let daylight go blue than have the artificial lights sort of look too orange. To ensure that the camcorder is white balanced correctly, hold up a piece of white paper in front of the light source that you want to balance white. In this instance, the artificial light. Zoom in so that the paper fills the frame before balancing. And it's important to shade the paper so only the desired light is falling onto the paper. Now the scene is balanced to make artificial light look white and daylight look blue. 
So far, we've discussed how to improve your control over the scene. But let's look at ways in which you can improve on how you use the camera to capture the action. The most common way of using a camcorder is to hand hold them. Convenient, but it's difficult to get steady shots. You can also get pretty tired. Using a tripod is a great way to improve your shots. A good quality, fluid drive tripod is invaluable in helping to get smooth, even camera movement. But what if you want to have the camera moving with the action? You are back to hand holding. I'd like to tell you about a piece of equipment that I think is going to revolutionise home movie making. This is the Steadicam JR. Now its purpose is to counteract any abrupt movements of the camera so that the camera always remains level and steady. The principle is this. The camera is attached up here. Now the platform sits in a gimbal attached to this handle. This angle arm here counteracts any abrupt movements by the operator. At the bottom of the arm there are some batteries and some adjustable weights to match the weight of your camera. And here's a big bonus, a monochrome liquid crystal monitor built into the Steadicam itself. Now most camera motion is transmitted through your hands trying to keep the camera up to your eye. This monitor allows you to see exactly what the camera sees with both eyes while holding it at a number of angles. You can also see where you're going a lot easier too and it even works in bright sunlight. The Steadicam JR lets you move in many ways, glide up, down, sideways, even spinning. You can walk ahead of people, angle up, angle down or sideways, all in smooth motions. Steadicam JR adds less than one kilo to the weight of your camera, but it adds tons of quality to your shots. The Steadicam is also a lot more convenient than a tripod and you can use it in several different positions. For example, you can use it up here on your shoulder, or you can place it flat down on a table, and also it attaches very easily onto a normal tripod. Once you fit your camera to it though, <laughs> you may never want to take it off again. In Home Movie Maker 1, we saw how to edit in camera by thinking about the order of the scenes we shot, rewinding and then dropping in shots. Now while this is a useful way to use your camcorder, it often proves a little inconvenient in practice. The way that professionals do it is to shoot all the shots as they occur, then edit down this material later. So why do we edit? Well, the first reason is very simple. Editing removes material that's unsuccessful. I mean, stuff that's out of focus or badly shot or just dull. It allows you to concentrate on the material that is of particular interest. The next benefit that editing provides is the opportunity to change the order of the shots from the order in which they were shot. And finally, ordering your shots allows you to tell a story. Now this story could be a wedding or a, or a family history. To edit your material at home, you require a replay machine, that's your camcorder, and a record machine, most commonly just your domestic VCR. Of course, the camcorder and the VCR must be connected with all the appropriate cable. If you don't have these cables, Maya carries a full range of these accessories. The technique is simple. First, press the record and then the pause button on your VCR. Then, find the first shot you want on your camcorder. At the point where you want the scene to begin, release the VCR pause button and the VCR will record your shot. When enough of this shot has been recorded, again press the pause button on the VCR. Find the next shot in the camcorder and release the pause button again. The two shots have now been edited together. With enough practice, you can edit your location footage into a simple sequence. This is an effective, if slightly awkward way, of editing your material. See, a problem with this technique is that vision and sound are recorded at the same time. So unless you have a VCR with an audio dub feature, you can't add music or commentary over the edited sequence. Fortunately, to improve the quality of your edited material, 
a range of specialised editing and image processing accessories is available. Now these editing systems range from the simple to the complex, but they're all designed to achieve the one result. Better control over the selection and order of shots in the edited sequence. Now we'll look at what these systems have to offer in more detail a little later, but whether you assemble directly from your camcorder to the VCR or use one of these editing controllers, it's important to consider what type of shots will go into the final product. Now this selection of shots is referred to as coverage. The type of coverage depends on the details that you want to see. Think of shots as being a bit like uh, sentences that, that tell a story. And like writing, there are simple grammatical rules that help keep the story clear and understandable. So, let's look at an example of how to get the shots that will allow us to tell a story. When shooting a performance, it's usual to shoot a master wide shot. This takes in the whole scene and usually all the action. We obviously want a tight shot on the face to see her expressions. As the subject is a dancer, we want close-ups of her feet. Finally, to add interest to the scene, let's shoot a silhouette. As I said before, editing has simple grammatical rules, just like writing. Now one important rule when you're shooting coverage of a scene like this is continuity. Simply put, the dancer should dance the same steps, in the same order, in the same place. This is so when the different shots are edited together, the sense of time is not interrupted. It's as if there were four different cameras shooting the same scene at the same time. Changing the camera angles between shots can make the sequence even more interesting. Sometimes the best angle to show the whole scene will not be the best angle for the feet, for example. Move the camera a little and the close-up may capture the action more clearly. The trick here is to watch the movement of the subject through frame. If our dancer moves through the shot from left to right, the same movement should occur in the close-up. When selecting angles, keep this tip in mind. Now, before we look at editing this sequence, we should consider the soundtrack. Now, the camera's been recording the sound each time our dancer performs her steps but we may not have a complete recording from beginning to end. It's worth making sure that you have a sound master as well as a vision master. This sound can be recorded onto the camcorder or through a good quality audio cassette recorder. This is important, especially for a wedding ceremony, for example. Let's look at some of the post-production accessories that have been developed specifically for home use. This device is an editing controller it controls the functions of the camcorder and the VCR and allows you to select your editing points with more precision. It has a memory that allows you to repeat edits and make adjustments of the cutting points if required. This is an image and sound processor. These devices allow you to modify the vision and the sound. It can actually change the qualities of the image. It allows you to adjust the brightness, contrast, colour, and the sharpness of an image. You can fade the image up from black and down again. And it also allows you to control the level of the sound coming from the replay tape and add additional sounds such as narration or music. A video effects processor can influence the material you've shot in many different ways. This device can fade an image up from black or white or fade through to almost any color you wish. By only partially introducing the fade, you can add a coloured tint to a scene. There are also wipe devices like side to side, top to bottom, irising down to centre and so on. You can even simulate a letterbox effect like a cinemascope movie. And some processes have a digital effect where you can posterise a scene. Finally, this is a titles and caption generator. As its name suggests, this device can add titles onto your material. All this equipment can be purchased and used separately or connected together to create a complete home studio. Although it's important to note that some functions are dependent on the VCR you're using to record onto. Now while these systems will work with the simplest VCR, naturally the better the VCR, the better the results. Let's look at how we can use this equipment to add sophistication to an edited sequence of the ballet dance. 
As with the simple assembly edit that we looked at before, the first step is to identify the beginning of your first shot. Mark that point, and mark the point on the record tape where you want the sequence to begin. The edit controller records this information, then performs the edit. Let's review the first shot. Well, not bad, but the beginning is a little abrupt. What could work well here is a fade up from black. Some of you will have cameras that have a fade function. This is really handy for introducing and ending sequences. But when you're shooting, how do you know which shot will be the beginning and which shot will be the end? This is where the image and sound processor can be really useful. Let's re-edit the opening shot with a fade up from black. The editing controller enables you to repeat the first edit and the processor will allow you to fade up both sound and vision. Much better. We've now worked out our beginning, so how about adding a title to introduce this sequence? The title generator will allow you to add titles in a number of ways, but we want a simple title. Jenny's first year of ballet. Now we want this to appear before our first shot. Let's bring this up over black. Now fade the title back to black. A little practice and you could be producing first class results. This is just an indication of how you can use this equipment to achieve really first class results. The rest is up to your imagination. You know camcorders can also be used as a means of converting and storing old images onto the modern medium of videotape. Slides, 8mm films and even old photos. The simplest way to do this is to shoot them off the wall. I mean it sounds dangerous but it's not. You set up your camcorder on a tripod next to your projector. But the results may not be great. You might also consider a home telecine unit. This handy magic box lets you transfer your old images straight down the lens of your camcorder for optimum clarity. Focus your slide or movie projector against the screen. Place your camcorder against this lens and now start recording your slides or film. Be sure when transferring slides to maintain a very slow and even change rate so that you won't have to use the pause button repeatedly when viewing the tape. And to eliminate annoying flashes that occur between slides, simply pause your camcorder until the image is settled. This Vivitar unit also has the facility to shoot colour prints. Place them in this holder and an internal light provides proper illumination without any glare. And here's a tip for improving faded or dark photos of slides. By using an image processor and recording directly onto your VCR, you can adjust and improve the brightness and clarity of the image as well as adding fades and wipes. You may remember in Home Movie Maker 1, we briefly discussed the use of filters. Filters can be used to influence the light that reaches the camcorder. Halo filters can add a soft room of colour to emphasise the subject. Diffusion filters can help control contrast problems by evening out the bright areas. They also give a soft and romantic look to a scene, a useful effect if you're taping a wedding or a christening. If you happen to have a camera with the ability to manually adjust the colour balance, you can use these to capture the wrong colours on purpose. For some interesting effects, try balancing off a lightly coloured card instead of white. Remember, there are no rules when it comes to using a camcorder. Experiment and have fun. Many of you may have purchased your camera for a planned overseas trip or to record family events to share with others overseas. In case you're not already aware, there's a big difference between Australia and many other overseas countries with regards to video signal. It's like a lot of electrical currents, 220 volts here, 110 volts somewhere else, and so on. There are three main broadcasting signals in the world. There's PAL, NTSC, and CCAM. The important point to remember is that your Australian equipment is PAL. That means that if you travel overseas, you may not be able to play your videos through televisions in the country you're travelling in. Pre-recorded tapes purchased overseas may be incompatible, and if you send or receive videos from another country, you may not be able to play them. However, you can purchase blank video cassettes in any country, and you'll be okay. The kind of tape you use doesn't matter. It's the cassette format that's important. 
high quality international brands like BASF are available throughout the world. Oh, and don't buy accessories or equipment overseas unless you're absolutely sure it's compatible with your equipment at home. My advice is always buy at home from a large, reputable store like Meyer. As you can see, there are ways to add sophistication to your home movies beyond simply pointing the camera and pressing the button. It's always a good idea to think about the end result before you start to shoot. What's the reason for this video? Who'll see it? What will they want to see? What do I want to show? Use this reasoning even when shooting a, a simple birthday party. It helps keep you focused on your task. Some of you may even be using your camcorders in work-related situations. Real estate, works projects, uh, architects, tours and that sort of thing. Anyway, I hope the information contained in Home Movie Maker 2 has been some help to you in achieving a more professional result from your video. And just because you now have your camcorder, as well as me on video forever, you can always turn to Maya for sound professional advice, as well as the advanced accessories you've seen featured here, and many more. So, have fun, keep practicing, and enjoy the pleasure your camcorder gives you and all those around you. Thanks for watching. See you later. The fantastic colors of BASF. Again, again, and again. Guaranteed 2,000 times.